what's up guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're having a lovely day and i hope it gets even better from watching this video today we're chatting all about how to actually become your favorite self and get that ball rolling of just making your dream life vision actually a reality because it's so common to set goals and have this like exciting period like i'm gonna change my life and then within like a week or two you just completely give up or you revert back to your usual shenanigans or you even forget that you ever set those goals so <laughs> we're gonna change that i don't know why but this is like prime time for me to like get my ish together every single year like when fall starts i am ready like this is my new year's you know <laughs> you can start a new chapter whenever it really doesn't matter and in this video we're going to focus on what your favorite self means what that looks like for you and then really actionable steps to get you there and we're going to focus on a three month period so it's a very short focused period of time that's hopefully going to be a lot more realistic for you and a lot more manageable and very actionable so without further ado oh by the way subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more content like this, we've got lots of advice videos. We chat about self-development topics and make them very like actionable. So you can actually do this stuff and not just listen to it all the time. And then you're like, okay, alrighty. <laughs> and just go back to what you were doing, you know? So let's get started. So what is your favorite self? Okay. So you know how a lot of us have heard about or even talk about like becoming your best self, becoming your highest self. Like those are very popular phrases in the self-development space. And sure that can be motivating, but to me it always made me feel like my highest self or my best self was always so out of reach. You know, it was like I have to do so many things to get to that point that it feels just I can't even fully comprehend it you know when I start to get overwhelmed by something like oh this is gonna take so much and I can't even fully see the steps like I have a very organized brain and if I can't organize the steps in my head which I can't because it's such a big picture I get overwhelmed and then I give up that is just what usually happens you know <laughs> I have to have a very strong mindset for that not to happen but when I think about my favorite self it's so much more achievable because I've been my favorite self many times over the course of my life. It might not have been in all of the areas of my life at once, but I've experienced it. I've had moments where I felt like my favorite self. I know exactly what that feels like without really having to change everything about myself. And that to me is really like what life is about or one of the things life is about is <laughs> like enjoying where you are now. Like, why do you need to change everything about yourself in order to enjoy your life and feel accomplished of course it's amazing to have goals and to reach for something and we're, t we're talking about that today don't you worry but it feels so much more achievable when you're like I'm gonna strive to be my favorite self and that is gonna be my focus and I already know what that feels like I don't have to change everything about myself I don't need to take these huge leaps and bounds that are gonna take years for me to get to here I can really think about like what do I need to do on like a daily basis to feel like my favorite self? And to me, that seems so much more achievable. And I feel like thinking that way and acting that way and focusing on that will eventually get to, you know, you being your best self or your highest self, whatever that even means. Basically, I have just never been someone who has been able to see that huge big picture. It makes me feel overwhelmed. And my favorite self doesn't make me feel that way. I'm like, oh, I can be my favorite self. Like that to me feels really, really good and achievable. And it gives me the grace to change my mind if I'm not happy. So how does your favorite self feel like to you? This might be something you instantly know. That's how it was for me. It just felt peaceful. Like I am at peace with my life. I want to use the word content, but that kind of has a negative connotation in my mind because it like feels like settling. And that is not what I mean. <laughs> it just feels like... I'm at peace with my life. Like I'm so happy, but I am so at peace and so grateful and just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like a, a very nice feeling. And it, that is like a common thread when I imagine my life as my favorite self. So if you have to imagine it, like how are you in your day-to-day -day life? What do you do to relax, to have fun? What habits do you have? How are you like in relationships? How are you like in your career? Like it has to be very you focused because again, this is you as your favorite self. So yeah, you can imagine of course a beautiful relationship, but how are you in that relationship? Do you know what I mean? When you have that like vision of 
how you are as your favorite self. See if there's like a common thread. So for me, again, anything I would imagine, whether it was my career, relationships, my lifestyle, it all felt very happy, but very peaceful. And I felt content and grateful. And that was like the common thread. Another common thread was that my life feels very structured, but in like a, in a peaceful way. (laughs) I have the things that I do for myself that I love to do. I'm like productive. I'm doing things that I love, but everything feels very peaceful. And that was the common thread. To you, it might be like anything I do in that dream life vision as my favorite self, I have this childlike wonder and I'm just exploring and having fun and playing, you know, and that is the common thread for you. Like it, it's going to be different for everyone, you know, but try to make it very, very clear. If you need to write a word, a sentence that instantly gives you that vision or even like a vision board. I love having like a Pinterest board that I keep adding pins to. So You can create a board that's called like my favorite self. And then with time, you just keep adding photos in like every day. You can go through it for like two minutes. You know, you scroll online anyway. You might as well do something that's actually going to inspire you. And you just pin photos that spark that favorite self every day. And it's like a constant reminder. And it's so enjoyable to do because I love Pinterest anyway. I look at photos anyway. You know, (laughs) I might as well do something that's going to inspire me to live like that. Once you have that very strong vision and you know exactly what that looks like, if you need to do like a guided visualization, if this is hard for you, I'll link one below that I personally really like. I do it almost every day Um, and it just kind of guides you through imagining, you know, your best life, but really do it through the lens of I am my favorite self. Yeah, just get very clear on what it looks like, what it feels like. Again, choose a sentence, a word, just anything that will get you that feeling of like, oh, this is my favorite self. Like this feels really, really good. And I can feel that way today. Alrighty, let's get super granular and focused on how that's actually going to look like in a very like actionable, achievable, tangible way. So you're going to take a three month period. So just write down when you're going to start. I recommend starting tomorrow because it doesn't matter if it's a Monday or Friday whatever. So while you're actually feeling inspired and motivated, you might as well take that to your advantage and just get started. Um, And then write down the end goal. And that is your time of focus. So don't think ahead of that. All that exists to you right now are those three months, because again, we don't want to get overwhelmed. Uh, We don't want to change our minds. Like you can really focus on something for three months, you know, We can all do that. If you get easily overwhelmed, I highly recommend choosing one area of your life that you're going to focus on. So whether that's, I want to work on my mindset, I have always wanted a healthy, happy relationship, or I want to work on just my day to day, my lifestyle, my habits, or my career, or I want to start saving, whatever it might be, choose one area. That favorite self vision is really going to help you to know your why. If something is important, you make it happen. If it's not, you make excuses. We sometimes make goals from our ego or like what that's gonna look like, what it's gonna do for our status, what is, you know, and that is all good and dandy if it actually is very meaningful to you. If it's not, if you ask yourself like, why do I wanna do that? And you don't have an answer or it's a very surface answer, you're gonna start to make excuses down the line when that excitement and inspiration dwindles, which it inevitably will. So you need to have a very strong why. Why do I want to have 15,000 euros in my bank account? Why is that important to me? Because it gives me stability. It makes me feel more confident. It makes me feel safe in my life. And it inspires me to, you know, work harder in my career and really make my goals happen because I can really track my finances in a very tangible way. That might be an answer for you. Whatever it is, it has to be very strong and you have to really feel it because again if it's not if it's an ego-based goal you're gonna make excuses because it's not that important to you so you're not gonna work for it because why would you if it's not meaningful to you and then you're gonna pick up to three very specific goals that you can track and achieve in a three-month period i'm gonna be using the example of i want a healthy happy relationship my favorite self in my dream life vision has that and like thrives in that and i have never experienced that before i've been in toxic relation whatever it might be i'm using that example because 
it's seemingly not very tangible and not very actionable, but you can make it very actionable and make it actionable and trackable in that three month period. Obviously, you might not get a full on relationship in three months. You know, we're we're realistic here. You can make very concrete steps that will get you closer to that end big goal, a goal like I'm going to put myself out there more. That is not a clear goal. That is not going to be something that you're going to stick to. You can't track it. It's not specific enough. In this scenario, I want a healthy, happy relationship. I've never had that. I've had toxic relationships in the past, so I know that I have to make some changes in order to get there. I need to also learn and grow to make that happen. So for example, my three goals could be um, I will read three books on relationships and dating that will help me to learn and shift how I view relationships and how I show up in relationships. Number two could be I'm going to go on three dates. So that is like you putting yourself out there, but it's very specific. I'm going to go on three dates with three different guys. And then the last one is maybe I'm going to get a dating coach or I'm going to complete a dating course by the end of these three months. You know, just something that is very tangible. You can easily track all of those. And sure, like the goal wasn't I'm actually going to have a healthy, happy relationship because you don't know if that can happen in three months, you know, but you're taking steps to get to that. And those steps are actually very reasonable and achievable and you're still gonna change your life so much in those three months than if you did nothing at all. Because if you choose all these big goals and so many of them, like a list of 20, and then you get overwhelmed and so you do nothing, you're actually gonna make such a bigger difference by just focusing on those three smaller goals within three months. Like your life is actually gonna be different after those three months because you did those things, you know? And then you're also gonna choose up to three habits. And one of those should be a mindset habit, like a habit that's gonna help you to have a strong, resilient, positive mindset. The reason why you wanna do that is because your mindset is really something that's gonna keep you going. If you have a very strong, resilient mindset, it's gonna be the thing that keeps this ship sailing even after that motivation and inspiration and excitement has dwindled and that is what you need. I want to make a whole video about it because it's such a big topic but for the sake of this very like tangible action-based video let's just say that you choose one habit that's going to help you to have a very strong resilient positive mindset. So you need to figure out what that is for you whether it's you know I write a gratitude list every day or I listen to a visualization, or I listen to affirmations when I get ready every single day. When it comes to achieving your goals, it's not always fun, it's not always easy. A lot of the time it's not. So your mindset is gonna be what keeps that going and it's gonna keep you from giving up. So as I've said, we need three habits. So one is the mindset habit I just mentioned, and then in the relationship scenario, I, for example, could write down three things that I love about myself every single morning because I know that if I'm constantly thinking negatively about myself, if I don't genuinely love myself, it is so much harder to expect someone else to love you. So writing down three things that I love about myself, it's really gonna give me that confidence and make me feel like I know what I bring to the table, like I am worthy. And you're lucky that you're on a date with me because I'm incredible and I know that, and that is magnetic. And then habit number three could be, I'm gonna dance twice a week, whether that's a dance class, a class at home, or just me dancing in the mirror because I know that makes me feel super feminine and confident and beautiful and graceful. And that is the kind of energy I wanna bring into dating and a relationship. Like that is how I wanna feel. And I know that dancing gets me into that. And then the last step is to track all of that. So whether that's you have a notion board, I like to just draw it and like color it in every day when I do something. That is what helps me the most. I just love coloring it in. And then if I miss a day, like I'm just not happy about it because I didn't color it in that day. <laughs> like I don't know why it works for me. Uh, but just keep tracking it because that's really going to keep you going for the duration of the three months. And let us know in the comments like which habits and goals you chose. And then at the end of the three month period, you can come back and be like, I made that happen. And this is how my life is so much better now. You can use this space as your like accountability partner. And you can even write updates if you want to like do whatever you want. But I would love to hear what you guys are working on. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you want to see next. And I can't wait to chat to you guys really soon. Bye.